These are materials that are used for making uh, carbon fiber bikes, for aerospace engineering, making airplanes, cars for really lightweight, strong structures. It's carbon fiber. Male elephants really use their tusks a lot. All elephants do. Male elephants do socially. They'll get in, tussle, and push on each other with their ivory, which is what we've seen Bawagi doing a lot more of the last five years. Um, and he wears his tusks a lot. He plays with the logs. He picks logs up with the tusk. He strips the bark off of them. He digs in the dirt to get the roots of the trees. So he uses his an awful lot. Um, and that amount of use with that crack the way it was probably would have led to him splitting or even severing, breaking that tusk. So we had to get something on there pretty soon. And the steel ring would have been nice, but this material I think, again, probably holds up better and it covers a bigger space, which allows him to take pressure on it in a bigger area of the tusk. Um, so it should help with leverage as well when he's flipping logs or whatever. We started out outside the barn. The tusk was getting prepped a little bit, cleaned with soap and water, and then some alcohol to make sure that it had a, a clean surface and would that the, the product would adhere appropriately. Once we were inside the barn, um, applied some acrylic packing tape at first, and that's to seal the crack so that the epoxy didn't go down into his tusk. Um, but also so that there would be an appropriate vacuum because we would then be um, putting the wrap over that packing tape. And so the packing tape extended beyond the edges and the, um, there wasn't a break in where the seal would be for the vacuum when we got to that step. Um, so we got that on, did some tape around the circumference that was a sticky tacky tape that was later on in the process going to be involved with the vacuum. Spent a lot of time watching the crack and when he got here it was very small and it was, it was there, but it was quite a bit smaller, just out of the sulcus or the, the lip area. And because of the amount of time he spends around other males, he uses it a lot to push and fight and defend himself. And we've watched it over time. And we've tried three or four other things to try to mitigate that crack growing out. We trimmed it back a little bit to just give him less leverage when he was playing with it. Um, we tried filling it in with dental cement to see if that would hold it in place a little bit better and allow it to, to heal up a little bit more. Um, so we have tried several different things and watching it, um, but it just got long enough and deep enough that we figured, yeah, it's probably, we, we didn't want to cut it anymore. So we figured we wanted to try to just clamp it together. And that's when our idea came up, you know, we've used steel and other ones. So the idea came, well, let's, let's just see if we can't keep that together while it grows out. And then asking UAB for any advice or any steel that they might have. And that started the whole conversation and we ended up using the carbon fiber. Dr. Sim continues with an overview of the operation we're watching. We had then applied the different layers of carbon fiber and fiberglass. We did a sleeve of unidirectional carbon fiber, and then we did a wrap of unidirectional fi carbon fiber, then we did um, a couple different braided sleeves of carbon fiber, followed by a few sleeves of fiberglass braid. All that was just to provide the strength, all the different directions that the fibers go are to resist the forces the tusk would later be under, to provide the strength that the engineers calculated it would need. Um, and that was the, you know, the component of the planning that Brian Play and his lab did. Once we had those layers in place, uh, we put some infusion straps around it. They looked like plastic uh, uh, cloth things that went around the circumference. They are what the epoxy got sucked into and diffused around it with. They're kind of a, a space occupying layer. They're kind of a corrugated product that allowed the um, liquid to go around it and then uh, set up and sink down into the materials. We put a plastic wrap around that to um, aid the vacuum and hooked up the hoses and uh, then got the vacuum going so that it could really set up, suck the epoxy into the product, into the, the braided materials and set up. 
Yeah, traditionally we've used steel rings, be it brass or even just steel, and that'll help hold the crack together. And it allows the elephant to still use the tusk, but doesn't put any more flex or any more separation to that crack. And it also helps if the elephant lays down, then they're not wearing the tusk on the dirt or the sand or whatever they're laying on. So it keeps it from the tusk from getting worn out on the side as well. This new product is really nice because it'll hold a bigger space. It's actually almost about a foot long. So it takes up more of the crack space and holds it in place. And being smooth like it is, it doesn't get affected by him putting it through the bollards or any of the things that he might normally do in his day-to-day -day life where that round steel ring might be a little bit more of an obstacle. This product is more smooth, like a cast on an arm. Um, it's just smoother, and it seems to be that it's as strong, if not stronger, than those steel materials. The partnership between Birmingham Zoo and University of Alabama at Birmingham, and the materials department, and Dr. Pillay in particular, it really was a great partnership. They worked very well with us gave us some new ideas and since this thing has happened they've actually been contacted by places inquiring into their process so they may end up getting a chance to revise it and change it and alter it for different elephants different cracks different um, dispositions of different animals but that working relationship that we have our vet department and us the elephant crew with UAB is very very valuable there's going to be all sorts of ways that they can help us in the future with elephant care. Um, and certainly, hopefully, we can be a, a, a resource for them for all things animal and conservation and preservation. So I would say that um, it's a pretty unique relationship between a zoo and a university um, that really proved to be very, very beneficial.